very disappointed that Governor Quinn would take people who depend on government and threaten to make these cuts that would have really bad impacts on him. He, in my opinion, he used those people, and I think that's wrong. And it comes back to, you know, I, I don't think you should do scaremongering and, and threats. I mean, if you're a leader, I don't think you do that. You, make, you need to make tough decisions, you need to explain your decisions, and you need to come up with solutions. And it's not this always in Springfield, it's this either or. You do it my way, you raise taxes very, very high, or we're going to cut these people that depend on government the most. That's not the way to do it. It's wrong to use people like that, and it's wrong to analyze the situation that way. We know that there's a middle ground in there, and that's what government the governor, the leaders, Springfield should be looking at is trying to find a way to solve the problem, to provide those services that government should provide without, you know, making the cost of government so high that everybody wants to leave mm -hmm. our, our state. And, and I come back to, you know, what I said before, there is a middle ground. We've shown that you can do that. A fiscally conservative government based on Republican values can do it, and it is a, a viable alternative. As far as, as far as some specific examples, I mean, I think when you look at Medicaid, and it, it, it's almost like Medicaid doesn't, the way it's run now by Springfield, they don't really take into consideration, one, the people are served by it, um, or the cost. Those two things are sort of left out of it. It's almost, you know, the vendors are more important than that. And an example I would give is that the most expensive care that you can provide to somebody, there's two most expensive types of care, sending someone to an emergency room and or placing someone in a, nurse, in a nursing home. Now, nursing homes are very, very necessary. Uh, for certain people, and emergency rooms are very, very uh, necessary for certain people. But you don't want the emergency room to be the first port of call for somebody who needs services. You want it to be only for an emergency. And if Medicaid provided for people to get prophylactic care, it would keep a lot of people out of the uh, 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 out of the emergency room, if they had some kind of managed care where they where they looked at a person early on, the person would be healthier. Nobody wants to be in an emergency room, and the the services provided to them would be cheaper. It's a win win, but the state has never been able to make that change because oh, you have to say no to somebody, or you might have to make somebody angry. But the best policy is keep these people people healthy up front and provide them with care that is less expensive. Same thing with nursing homes. Sometimes I believe in Illinois we just warehouse people in nursing homes because there's nowhere else to put them. It's been shown when you have developmentally disabled individuals they are much better off in a group home uh, where, where they can uh, have as much success as possible and it's a cheaper alternative to a nursing home. But once again, Illinois doesn't really look at that. They're, they're not focusing on building group homes. And uh, so we spend more money and the people who are put in those nursing homes, they're not, allow, not allowed in a nursing home to reach their full potential, which they would probably be able to do uh, in, in a group home. So those are just a, a couple of examples mm -hmm. of things that I think the state, now, is it difficult to make change? Change is always a difficult thing to do, but that's what leadership is all about, is saying, hey, we got to change. This isn't working, or we can do it better this way. And for those of you who want to stay with the status quo, I'm sorry we're not going to do it anymore. And that's where you make people, you know, angry and... Uh,